What's good everybody? Welcome back to another video, another reaction. Uh coming your child with a little story time from someone and you rock stories. Uh so we got this video that we about to check out. So y'all make sure y'all subscribe. Subscribe subscribe to the channel and let them know that I sent you. So yeah, um Yeah, we're about to see what's going on. It's called Me and Pete. So let's check it out. Here we go, here we go, here we, here we, here we go. Yeah, how y'all doing today? I'm back for another one for you. But this one will be serious. Two parts. I'm going to tell you about my homeboy, Pistol Pete. So the first video will be... The Pistol Pete. That sounds like... Uh, he went to, went to prison for pistol whipping somebody. That's why they call him Pistol Pete. Now nah, I'm just bullshit, but yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to the video. Me and Pete. So, so I get out of prison and uh, come home. You know, a lot of people, once you've been down and, you know, you uh, have dreams of doing things different. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's usually the, that's the most common way. It don't always work that way, but so... Come home. Excuse me. This ought to be good because he about to drink the water, so he just drunk his water. So this ought to be good. Come, come home. home. And, and um, uh, I, I go to, to the, the um, um, what was it called? It was the WIA program that someone told me about. And you get involved with it, and uh, they try to help you people that have like disabilities. Now, my disability was that I was locked up, and I have to kind of readjust, you know, in society. So sometimes it's all about the wordplay. So I get registered with them, and I find out. I need to find out how long you've been in there. That there's a testing going on with the city of Columbia. I mean, Columbia, South Carolina. So, uh, you go take this test, and it's probably about 40, about 40 people or so that's taking this test. But only a select few, the ones that score the highest, will go on to the next level. Next level being, you had a choice between two trades, I believe, two or three. Uh, I know carpentry and a brick mason class. So, so I do know those two. It may have been another one, but I can't remember. So I go sign up for this testing and take it. Well, I mean, hey, oh, let me tell you this too. Also, once you finish, if you know you're going to the next level, once you complete the trade, you're guaranteed a job with the city of Columbia. So you can't beat that. Nothing beat a failure but a try. So I go sign up, take the test. And well, the first day, it, it took like this a week long testing, right? Long test. So, uh, um, a whole week? I don't even like sitting in the class for eight hours, let alone a whole week. I wonder how long was this, how long was these classes? Took, what is? It took about a week. You had a, several different parts to take. Yeah. So you took certain parts each day. So the so first day I go, uh, I start taking my parts and then you get a little break and you go outside, drink some water, you know, eat some, eat something, smoke a cigarette, whatever you want to do. So on my break, well, I noticed before the break, it was, uh, you know, you look around, you observe your scenery, uh, you know, your area, people around you. So I was looking around and I saw this guy, he looked kind of familiar, but I didn't really know him. You know, I didn't know him, he just looked familiar. You know, you see that everywhere you go. It's always somebody looks like somebody. So... I saw, I saw him, you know, didn't say nothing or nothing, nothing like that, but just noticed him. So I go outside on break, uh, oh, I'm smoking a cigarette. The guy walks up to me, the one that I noticed. He walked up to me and he said, hey man, what's going on? So it's like, All right, you know, nothing. Like, what's going on, brother? He was like, uh, I want to say he asked me for a cigarette, but then again, I don't because I don't believe he smoked. I don't believe so, but whatever it was, he said something to me, and we kind of started, you know, a little, 
a little chat. You know, what's up? You know, where you from? Or, you know, what's out of town? Or, you know, and it was people that were there was really not like people that we probably would have just picked it with. They were kind of, I don't want to say square, but you know, it just what did you, you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm a people person, so I you know, pick it with anyone. But I guess I seem more like his style of person to communicate with. So we spoke, we talked for a minute, and uh, time to go back, take the test. He went his way, I went my way, took the test, the next parts and everything. But I started noticing that every break that I took, it was just like, you know, it became natural that we kicked it with each other. You know, a little, just a little brief kick in the bobo. So, um, the week goes by, you take the test, and, um, lo and behold, I was one of the few that ranked high enough to go to the next level, right? Oh, shit. So, you, I see you. you know, once you're, you're done, they call you and tell you the result. You don't come back or nothing like that. So, uh, so I didn't see this, the guy again, you know, I just, we just spoke at the place and well, his name is Pete, but I never saw him again then. And uh, we separated, everybody went on their way. They called me, told me I'm going to the next level. So cool, I picked carpentry trade. You know, my dad was a good carpenter and I said, you know, just something, that, you know, just it'd be something cool to learn. So I go to my carpentry trade, which started probably like a week later. They gave you a little stipend every two weeks, probably about, I think maybe like $300, because you had to be in school. And you couldn't work. Well, no, you couldn't work unless you worked at night. But it was, would have been a lot for the trade because it was an all day thing. So they gave you a little stipend every two weeks, so like three hundred dollars. So my first day in the class, I go in there and I'm sitting down, and it's about maybe ten people in this trade class, ten or twelve people maybe. So all of a sudden, the last person was a little late. He walked in, and guess who it was? It was that guy, my boy Pete. And I saw him again, so, you know, of course, hey, what's up, bro? What's up, man? So, you know, yo, you made it through, yeah, you did okay, cool. So, you know, that was a trip. But, you know, we was in the class, so naturally, we still started speaking with each other on breaks. We was the only two that knew each other in the class. Didn't know each other that good, but, you know, we was uh, well enough to keep speaking on breaks and stuff like that. So we did that, you know. Just, just briefly, briefly kick, kick it. it. So, uh, I noticed one thing, day he came, came where he started, sometimes he would come to to, to the place, place late. You know, we had been talking and he told me that, you know, he, he had just got, got out himself. But it was probably, it was probably like, like six months before, before I did. did. So, so, um, you know, we used to try to keep talking to each other about it. He came out six months before he did. And he was just getting out. God damn, how many times he took the test? You know, you know, different things. Like, yeah, this trade gonna be good. And it's, it's gonna, you know, plus, you know, you get the job with the city. So we would be talking about stuff like that. And uh, it was kind of like one of them things that we was getting to know each other, but we didn't all the way know each other. So um, I think uh, uh, another maybe week or so passed. Mm, now I got a car. I ended up getting me a car. Now I'm driving to the, uh, to, class to class and stuff like that. So I pull up. He used to be coming in late sometimes. He would get dropped off, you know, female or homeboy. Somebody would drop him off, you know, like that. And it was a. So, uh, so you, I guess you became the, uh, I'm guessing, taking him home and bringing him. But just kind of with the, the behavior to me of, you know, a person that's just like maybe party sometimes or just be, you know, out late or something like that, you know, had uh, some, some stuff going on or whatever. Maybe like kick it with the girl, I don't know, but it just was that type. He was like a, a, a street dude, you know? So um, one day he, he tells me, he says, hey man, uh, check, check this out. You think I can get a ride to the house? You know what I'm saying? My people can't come get me, think I can get a ride. I can use gas money, you know. You know, I, you know I, I don't, no problem. Yeah, bro, I'll take you because we have been communicating or whatever. You need a ride? I got you. Took him to the house. Now, I've been out probably about, at this time, maybe about a month and a half, two months. Maybe about two months, a month and a half. So, I was really trying to want him to ride, do the right thing, you know. It was, it was a, that's, That's what, what I was, you know, you know pushing towards doing the right thing. 
But I, but I tell you, man, you know, you know the, the, devil the devil will put, put things, things in your path, path and make it hard sometimes. Always. Sometimes, a lot of times. Always. To, you know, to do the right thing. Go on through that not, now. Um, you know, you're not, you don't have the mental capacity or, you, you know, you're just not really, really ready. But you're trying, but you kind of one foot in, one foot out. And, you know, he'll give you everything that you think you need or want. You know, it looks good to you. But he can give you everything to destroy yourself or your situation. Or, you know, it happens just like that. So I gave Peter a ride home. Took him to the house. He was like, well, you know, you come in for a second, bro, come on in. I know him because I just got out. And uh, he was like, you know, you just getting out, stuff like that. But check this out. I got um some, I got some stuff in the house that, you know what I'm saying, you might want. Um. I think he said it belonged to uh, his brother or something like that. Maybe his brother was locked up. Um, not really sure, but it was some stuff that was too big for him. And um, he was like, I was going to take it to a good way. But it was some nice stuff. Like, you know, some really nice stuff had been in the cleaners and stuff and just hanging up in the closet. A couple of little items, you know. So he was like, bro, I got something. Come on in the crib. Check. You know, I don't know you just coming home and stuff like that. So. I mean, he gave it to me, you know, I uh, I accepted it. It was a really nice uh, couple of little articles, you know what I mean? They had really been taken care of. They were, you know, from the cleaners and stuff like that. But anyway, he looked out for me. I'm like, you know, cool, that's good looking out. I appreciate that. So, as we sitting in here, we chopping up a little bit. It's a nice little apartment, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, his mom had a nice crib, so... I was like, you know, your mom home, I don't want to say, say the wrong thing or nothing, you know, say those, you know, because very respectful, big on that. So he was like, oh, no, bro, this is this my, this my crib. I'm like, huh? Okay, you know, but I know we're not working, but we get stifling, but like 300, but this is a nice place, you know, it's really, really nice, laid furniture, nice, and you know, yeah, this is my crib, man. Dude, still selling dope, he's selling that dope. Cool. I don't go to asking too many questions. Excuse me, YouTube. <laughs> I just keep going. All right. So, like I said, I don't ask too many questions. Yeah, I don't want to seem too nosy. So, um, I'm sitting there, and now it's a knock on the door. Knock on the door. So he in the back. So he like, hey, bro, you can uh get that for me. Let old boy in. I'm expecting him. So I open the door, let a boy in. He look, he like, what's up? You know, Pete I'm like, yeah, 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 in the back. He told me that you ain't, bro, come on. So he come in, he sit down. I sit back down. I don't even trust that. So, you know, we get a small talk. Yeah, what's up, bro? What's going on? Yeah, little handshake. Yeah, what's up, bro? Yeah. Shoot the little handle out there, whatever his handle was. I don't remember. You know, he say who he is. I say who I am. Whatever. So uh, next thing you know, Pete come out the back. Oh shit. He sits in this chair that's this little glove seat that's across from him. I'm sitting in the single chair in the middle, you know, between these two and the table. He comes in, he sits something over the table. Now, I really don't have to really say too much what it was because, uh, well, it was uh, something that the guy could have made some money off of, you know. So, and the guy, and the guy looked at him, and he, 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 he looked down, and he picked up the merchandise, and he, you know, uh, surveyed it or whatever, and he goes in the pocket, he pulls out a little knot, and passes it to Pete. Pete goes back in the room, the guy gets up, well, the guy gets up, he leaves, Pete go back in the room, he come back out, we talk and we kicking it, we blah, blah, blah. So now I know that he is hustling, right? <laughs> So, you know, that was up my alley in the, you know, the past. I'm coming home trying to do the right thing. So, uh, so I was like, oh, bro, you know, my bad. I ain't, you know, I, I could have left. I ain't know, you know what I'm saying? You just had to handle your business. Oh, no, you good, bro. You good. You straight. Ain't but nothing. Just handle my You good. You good. So really now I'm kind of more than you. Well, I'm going to go ahead and dip, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got to get on there. You straight? Need something from the store and ain't got them right. Nah, I'm good. My people come through and pick me up in a little bit, bro. I see you in class tomorrow. All right, cool. Give our handshakes and we leave. We part ways. 
So, the next day, I come back, class, same thing. We just talking, chatting, you know, what have you. And like I say now, every day that I see him now for the next week, that's you know, going through your head. Is building up in my head. The thoughts are going through. I, I, don't, I think I won't get me so much. You see, though, what I'm saying now, I see that he is a plug. But I'm, I'm trying to, you know, stay focused or whatever, what have you. And so the day we got our stipend, three hundred dollars. This might have been the second time we got it. Just so happened that day, he asked me for a ride home. Pause. Pause. Remember, Remember when I told you that the devil will give you everything that you think you want or think you need to destroy yourself or a situation? Well, this is one of those times for me. Oh, shit. It's about to get juicy, y'all. <laughs> so I give him a ride home. And all the way there, you already know my mind ticking. It's twirling. You know what I'm saying, man? I, just, I do this, do this, do this, do that. Y'all know how it goes, you know, guys that been... In, out there in the street doing their thing. Y'all know what I was going through at this moment. So we pull up at his house. We get out the car, like, where you gonna come in for a minute? Yeah, 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 he did drink, so you want a little shot? Yeah, I come in and get a shot. So I go in there, we sit down for a minute, kick it. We were laughing about something when we walked in. He got the bottle, poured up the shots, took the shot. And when we took the shot, that just made it more, more smoother for all, all the thoughts that were going through my head to just be like, you know, to try to give me some confirmation. So, I uh, sit there for a little while more, we talk, we talk, and I'm trying to be like, you know, but part of like, yeah, and part like, you know, you know, you know, going through this back and forth with the one over here on this shoulder, one over here on this shoulder, don't do it. This is how, you know what I'm saying, man, don't listen to him. He always be trying to mess up the group. You know, so, uh, I turned to him and I said, hey, check this out, bro. Y'all gonna have to catch me on part two for the next part. <laughs> it was getting juicy. Now y'all gotta wait for part two. I'm gonna do part two in a minute. So that might be dropping tomorrow or so, whatever. But, I like the story. The story is getting pretty good. Until you say we gotta go to part two. So we're gonna have to wait for part two. I got part two. But I might wait until tomorrow. So y'all make sure y'all subscribe to my boy Rock Stories and like the video and tell them your boy sent sent y'all. So yeah. Hope y'all like the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll holler at y'all later. Peace. Make a change in my mind. Pick a lane. Commit and climb. The only way to win in life. I never miss that fact. Taking big swings, bitch. Hand me the path.